Welcome back to Assassin's Creed 2. Today, we're riding horses. No, we're not anymore. To Florence. No, we're still riding the horse. See? Do you have the horse whistle in no, this game? I don't think this game has the horse whistle, though. No. Oh, man. No one uses horses. Nobody cares. I know, but sometimes it's kind of fun to call a horse. You would call horses. It reminds me of, like, in Call of Duty Ghosts, when you can call Capone the guard dog named Riley. Why do you call it Capone, then? Because, do, I, do you need the whole explanation again? You haven't given it once, so sure, why not? This is the, okay, there's an awesome show out there called Mountain Men, okay? It's a bunch of guys that live out in the mountains and do awesome old-fashioned mountain stuff, you know, live off the land and whatnot. And one of them hunts cougars, and he has a bunch of dogs that he helps hunt the cougars with, and one of them is named Capone, and he's the most awesome dog you'll ever see in your life. And when he drives his truck to find the cougars... He puts Capone roped onto the hood of the car so that he can get the scent of where the cougar is. And Capone's just really awesome. So the dark dog named Riley in Call of Duty, I call Capone. Hmm. Does it make sense now? Sure, why not? I'm surprised that you haven't had a fangasm about Leonardo da Vinci yet. Da Vinci! I love you, da Vinci! He's decoding stuff. Oh, look how intelligent he is. Yeah. You can tell he's intelligent because he gets absorbed into writing things. Yes. And look at the hat. Only intelligent, artsy, smart, sciencey people wear that. Type of hat. If he's so smart, why isn't his hat straight? Because he's that kind of smart. He's so smart. He doesn't that care about his outward appearance, so he has all this fancy clothes, but his hat is on crooked. Yes. Well, because he knows you don't need to look amazing, you don't have to have a perfectly straight hat. To be a good person, to be respected, to be attractive. Okay? He's that oh, smart. You, you think he's attractive, do you? Uh, no, but <laughs> he, I can admire him. Oh, look, it's a glowing holy bag of purple, pink, holy leaves. Well, we just gained a whole bunch of assassination techniques, that's why. Thanks to Leonardo da Vinci. And Altair. But mainly da Vinci, the master assassin. No, Da Vinci just decoded stuff that Altair came up with hundreds of years ago. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, we can bail of Hey Assassinate now. Oh, good. Not sure why you need a special codex to tell you how to do that. Well, maybe he's not smart enough or uh, creative enough to come up with that himself. You can also... I'm assuming that's going to be an Air Assassinate, probably. Spoilers. Spoilers. Air Assassination, my favorite thing. I use it all you the time. Can throw people off buildings, which is, of course, near another codex page to figure that out. Yep. And then most, and most significantly, the air assassination, as Ernesto spoiled. And, yes, this is how I do 90% of my kills, because it's just so much faster. And it's really fun. Yeah, and it's fun. Air assassinations, I can actually understand why you need a codex kill, because they do a lot of things with it. First of all, it completely absorbs any impact from any fall, no matter what. Yep, yep. So you can kill someone from anywhere with this, basically. And if you climb up high enough, you can kill the guards that would normally, like, dodge your attacks. Well, no, they'll just catch your hidden blade like they always do. So that's the thing. You always use that cheap technique. That's No one should be doing that because it's just so out of the way and random. Uh, you way. get tired sometimes killing guard after guard after guard and blah, blah, blah. You don't so know how to kill things properly. No, it's tiring doing it the old-fashioned way. I just like to jump off a building and, and done. But yeah, air assassinations are a lot of fun to use. Yeah. And the hay assassinations are pretty useful, too. They're definitely useful, but I don't know why you need a codex for that. Yeah. Da Vinci, thank you. You got a thousand bucks for learning how to kill things. From who, though? Who is giving you this money? I don't know. Okay, so... Something about the animus. So you're just reliving a memory. Yeah. So are we assuming that at the time Ezio was earning all this money? Hard to say. Because the thing is that while the shops are canonical to the thing, and it, according to the synchronization, Ezio did buy every single piece of armor and weapon, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, the shops, you have to remember, are just animus reconstructions. Like, in the reality, Etsu probably went into the store, like, tried out the weapons, like, oh, yes, this is a very fine blade or something like that, or I don't know, whatever people do in the 1500s. <laughs> um, 
and yeah, so like there are probably a lot of little things that you're just going to cut out of this because it's just an animus representation to basically turn a binary switch on. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that actually means that uh, it's canonical to a thing. Like how Ezio earns money and like if you play this game a certain way, then Maria will never, or not Maria, Claudia will never take money when you run out of space in your bank at home. Yeah, that's true. Uh, But if that's only if you play it that way. Canonically, she must have taken the money for herself at some point because it can happen. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to say with these more nebulous parts how it fits into the animus. It's like how Ezio probably went onto each of these rooftops and synchronized while doing other things. They're just specifically sneaking them out. But yeah, now we're into the more heavily edited part of this, where I just show everything off bit by bit, as opposed to showing how to get there, that kind of thing. Yeah, there's no point of endless hours of us just running around town. Down. Easily another 20, 40 parts yeah. of just boring s- walking. filling space. Yeah. Well, not boring walking, boring running. Boring running and parkouring. But you get the idea. Oh, you didn't get to complete the awesome eagle dive. Sure I did. What is that for? Oh. It's for synchronizing. Uh Uh-huh. So in the end of this playthrough, do you get all the trophies? No. Do you get all them other... Is there multiplayer in this game? No. Okay. It's not really that hard to get all the trophies in this. Um, And I actually was intending to show it off as a bonus video, but then the PlayStation died, and I don't want to play this game again just to get the last few trophies. Yeah, it's not worth it for that. Yeah, of all the... Assassin's Creed games is probably one of the easiest ones to get a platinum trophy in or a golden achievement or whatever they have in Xbox land. They just have straight up achievements. Yeah, what's the one you get for getting all the achievements? Oh, I didn't know there even was that. I've never done it before. What a pleb. What a pleb. Okay, everybody out there, being a pleb is not a bad thing, okay? I've been (laughs) called a pleb about a million times in the last couple days, and I'm starting to think it's a compliment. Yeah, you can think that. So if you ever called a pleb, say thank you for calling me that. Wait a second. What? Do we have a second hidden blade? A Is second? that what I see? Second hidden blade? Do we have two whole hidden blades that we're using to fight right now? Do we? Yes. Oh. Da Vinci gave us another hidden blade, by the way. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Um, in addition to the upgrades we got, you also gained a second hidden blade. Which is pretty cool. You have matching gauntlets now. Yeah, now you can do double assassinations. More significantly, you can also use the hidden blades in combat. And you also have really awesome counter kills you can do. But more significantly, you can do double assassinations. I prefer using them in direct combat, personally. I prefer running up a wall and then jumping off and doing a double assassination. So you, so you don't even really need the double assassination. You could just run up walls endlessly because you just like <laughs> being cheap. And, you really are a pleb. Like, there's no other way of looking at it. Well, after playing enough Assassin's Creed games, you get tired of killing the same things all the time. Your moves change slightly, and the weapons do too. You get but... so many weapons to fight with. You don't even you don't try any of them. That's the problem. Well, I've tried them. You but... say, "Oh, I hate doing the same thing over and over again," but you just air assassinate every single time. <laughs> Because you're a terrible person. (laughs) Air assassinating is fun. It is, but there's so many other options you don't even look at. I look at them, but... (laughs) You look at them. You look look at them in the menu. Like, oh yeah, that is a possibility. Then you just air assassinate. Then I go back to the good stuff. Twelve out of seventy-three. Yep. Yep. A lot of viewpoints. You may have noticed that it's gone from seventy, or gone from sixty-six to seventy-three. There was 66 in the first game, or 66 no, 60, earlier in this game? Yeah, earlier in this part, we commented on the fact that there's 66 oh, yeah. spots. So now they've added more place on the map? Yeah, it's called DLC. They recognize it as DLC now, so oh. there's an extra few viewpoints. Oh, I didn't know that. I've never seen them. Are we doing that in this commentary? Yes. Okay, good, good. So, how do you think of the hidden blades in direct combat? Uh, well, you know how I like to fight, so... That but you, probably there, there are points where you have to fight someone face-to-face. 
So yeah, I know. I usually I like the hidden blades. I like to use those. Wait, on my way, I randomly found this guy. He uh, apparently stole some my money, so I took it back. Yeah, good. And and I stole rich. from him. Is he trying to steal from you again? Right? No, he's trying to barge past me. Oh, typical. No manners. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you kill them, then you pretty much automatically become notorious. Hmm. Yeah, I think if you kill any civilian, you probably would. No, if you kill a civilian, you just, uh, if you kill a certain number of civilians in a short amount of time, then you desynchronize. But, um, those things for some reason just count as a ton of notoriety. Hmm. I like that Atsu's not even looking at the city at that point. <laughs> but yeah, the one bad thing about air assassinating is sometimes you will kill civilians. Like, uh, a number of times, I've walked up a building, there's a couple guards right below that I want to kill, and then all of a sudden, Ezio flies, like, halfway across the street and air assassinates two, like, normal civilians that weren't doing anything. That's yeah, pretty bad auto-homing. Yeah, and it's like, what the heck? How do you even do that? So, it reminds me of, like, Lego Star Wars. We were trying to fight enemies, they just randomly start attacking your partner instead. Oh, yeah. But that's fine, because better your partner than you. <laughs> you start attacking yourself. <laughs> hey, this person with a white mark over his face. I should tackle him. But you don't? Nope. Ah. We've got buildings to climb. Buildings to climb, people to see. Yeah, basically. I gotta say... Even though in this game they reuse a lot of buildings as viewpoints, it's a lot, not as noticeable because ever, buildings don't ever really look that different. But when they reuse viewpoints in later games where they have like organic ones and stuff, it really, yeah. really stands the out. The same tree. Yeah. Yeah. They climb the exact same way. Boom! Assassination. See? A double air assassination. Now, how awesome was that? Pretty awesome. That's what I'm talking about. I love that like swing effect that happens when you assassinate someone and the slow motion and everything not slow motion it goes in slow motion sure it does mm -hmm. boom another codex page yeah, I can't remember how many codex pages are there I don't know a lot uh, every four codex pages expands your synchronization meter by a bit your synchronization meter yeah the health bar oh okay oh right right yes it does that and some armor does that too, right? Yeah, your armor always increases your uh, health and also gives you resistance, but we'll get into armor when we actually get some armor. Yeah, we haven't even gone to a store yet, have we? Yes, we have. It was one of the first missions we okay, did. Okay, well, we, we bought like a couple things, but we haven't gone to any other stores and actually done some stuff. Well, you get more items and stuff as the story goes on. Oh, okay. This building looks awfully familiar. <laughs> Putting these right next to each other really shows off how similar they actually are. <laughs> yeah, I think I said in one of the earlier parts that there's a lot of variety in the viewpoints in this game, but now I'm starting to think maybe I wasn't that accurate in saying that. <laughs> Although there are definitely some buildings that are very different. Well, yeah, the huge like landmark buildings, those are the best ones. Yeah, and those actually take a while to get up, some of them. I think. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit to them. Is this one going to be different? It does look pretty different. Looks different so if far. If they reuse this one, it kind of stand out, I think. Yeah. Okay, it's a little bit different, I think. A little bit. It has windows. Or did you just do one like this a little bit earlier? I think you did. I don't think so. Wee Climbing. <laughs> What are these little posts? Do they actually have any level of, like, actual significance? Um, yeah, I wonder, like, if they had built that, like, because they didn't have cranes back then, so they might have built that and attached ropes to pull up bricks and oh, stuff, yeah. and then it was yeah. just built into the building, so they left it? Yeah. That's all I can think of. Guess what time it is? Uh, uh, 10.23. No. What time? Time for a race, and you know what that means. Thieves? No, it means Venice rooftops. Oh, yay, good music. It's really, it's such a random song to use for this, like, oh, yeah, racing random people in the streets. Epic music. Dun, 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 dun. That's not what it sounds like at all. Yeah. Never do acapella. No, it's all, like, Italian and nice. 
You're saying I don't sound nice in Italian? Nope. You're Spanish, aren't you? Yes, I'm an Esa Guillermo. It's actually kind of weird. Something that's part of this game soundtrack a lot. Um, and there's two little incongruous bits. There's, te- there's like a techno beat in a lot of songs. But that makes sense because of the animus. But they also use a lot of electric guitar, which is kind of weird. Electric guitar? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Makes it more epic, I guess, somehow. Well, yeah, like, it's nice music, but it doesn't really particularly fit with the actual, like, period. Especially, it, it's, I do love uh, when music mixes things that you wouldn't necessarily think would go together, like this uh, female singer voice going along with, like, electric guitar and Italian guitars. You don't really ever hear that. It's pretty cool. I like it. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, the nice violin. I love violin. One of the best instruments ever made, just saying. If I ever do a let's play of music, we'll do a violins, definitely. <laughs> and if you need to make music more epic, you just throw in, like, a choir-sounding thing, and you're good. Mm-hmm. Just people going, oh, 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 oh. Never do acapella. <laughs> okay, I don't have a singing voice. I try, but I don't. Well, after a few years of commentary, I'm sure you'll find your voice. Yeah, all, like, speech people, they seem to be able to sing. Yeah, they practice, though. Yeah. Actually, what I do like about Assassin's Creed music is that it manages to be epic without do- relying on a choir, though. Like, they, they have just a single female singer do the choir stuff. Oh, yeah. And I think it adds a different kind of epic to it. Like, I don't know, thinking of the uh, melodies that the female choir really do, uh, like, in conjunction with Ezio, really make a very poignant sound, I think. I like it. you can just hear all these people like freaking out in the background and like, <laughs> racing around here though. Yeah, if you're ever trying to make an intense movie, just do that awesome like slow motion Italian opera type scene. Oh. Uh, okay, Ernesto is very easily satisfied. Guys. I love those. Try scenes. something different. No, no. Slow motion, really intense, people dying okay, in yeah. the Okay, oh. I, I guess yeah, Ernesto really is your target demographic go for it you'll make millions off all the people that are like him <laughs> or do the slow motion with the awesome like like hip hop type music going off with a good beat we did it we oh. finished the race yeah, we yeah. win see you next time